What's up everybody? Welcome back to Make It Custom. I got a special video for you today. It's one that you guys have been requesting and it is how to make these dimples in sheet metal. I did it on a console build that a lot of you guys asked about. There's a top cover of the uh, 71 Jimmy console that I custom fabricated. It had these dimples in it and I did not explain what that was for, how I did it. So this video is gonna show you not only what tool it is, but how to make that tool. So today we're gonna build an actual dimple die tool that is going to not only make cool dimple dies for countersinking screws and sheet metal, but it's also gonna do something really cool for bead rolling and it's gonna solve a warp issue that a lot of you guys have also been asking about. And this is one of the tricks that I use I haven't seen anybody else talk about it. It's pretty essential to the way I make interior panels out of aluminum or other materials and keep them from being really warped. So stay tuned. I know you're gonna love this one. Don't forget to like, click subscribe, hit notifications. Let's do it. All right, I'm gonna start this off with a bit of a story. So I used to have one of these tools. If you're one of the people that commented about it on the console video, I use this tool a lot. I actually use it on, on my door panels in my truck and uh, I use it on the console. This tool, I gave it away to a friend because he kept asking me about making him one and I kept not making him one. So when I saw him, I just, I just gave him mine. So I haven't made myself a new one yet and uh, I just figured I'd show you guys because he'd been asking about it. This tool is so that we can countersink a tapered screw into a piece of metal. Like a screw just like this. I don't normally use these uh, Allen head ones. I like the uh, Phillips screws better or flat heads because they kind of look older. But number 10 tapered screw, it's super handy to be able to use a punch and make a raised dimple that's recessed for the taper of the screw in a piece of sheet metal. I'm gonna show you on the truck here because it's uh, easy. I'm gonna show you right now. <laughs> it's all dirty, but this is what I'm talking about. It's a nice dimple that actually countersinks the tapered head of a number 10 screw in here. And there's another reason why this is super cool and it's one that you would not expect. By doing dimples in the flange of a bead rolled piece like that, like a door panel, it actually helps shrink the flange to compensate for all the tightening and shrinking of your bead rolling. That probably was a bit confusing. What I mean by that is that when you bead roll, like a big step all the way around a panel, which is usually what you do if you're, if you're making a panel, you start with a step around the outside and you do whatever designs you're gonna do. All that is adding tension and trying to pull the outside frame of your metal together. And that's why it gets that warp. It goes dunk, dunk, dunk. You know, as long as you fasten it down a bunch of times, you won't really see the warp too much. But I'm gonna show you after we make this tool, I'm gonna bead roll a piece of metal and you'll see that it'll have that warp in it that everybody asks about. How do you keep the warp out of sheet metal? This is just one more way. Sure, you can use a English wheel and you can stretch along your lines to try and, you know, pre-stretch the areas. When I do like pretty bead rolling or what I consider to be pretty bead rolling, like what I did inside the truck, I'm trying to not touch that metal with anything but the bead roller. I don't want to have to sand it. You know, I want to scratch it, sand it, do anything to it. I don't want to run it through the English wheel and, you know, make it shiny along the lines. I just want to bead roll it and be done. So this tool is amazing for that because you can just do your whole panel. It'll be warpy as hell. And then you dimple dye these little recesses for your screws to attach it. And that shrinks the frame until it's totally flat. And the first time I saw that was when I was doing my, my door panels and uh, it blew my mind. So hopefully it kind of makes you think a little bit. So what we're gonna do is make a top die and a bottom die that's gonna squish that shape. So this is gonna be our bottom. I like to put them on like just a little piece of thick metal. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna drill a hole 
right in the center of that. We are going to stick a pin out of there, which another handy use for these cheap transfer punches is I can find 3 16 here. It's the same size as my drill bit. It's the same size as this. So I'll drill a hole, I'll stick a pin in here. That's my locator pin. And then I will have to use the lathe and kind of turn the shape of this countersink into that in a male and female fashion. This will have a hole in it that you can align with the pin, slip it on there, and then smack it with a hammer. It'll make that dimple countersunk area. And that's what it is. So the first thing we got to do, I etch a sketched this on the lathe. I don't have a CNC lathe. So what I did was I just took a piece of template paper and I am going to make this shape in the template paper. So what is that going to be like? Got to get the right angle. Something like, yeah, it might be too much. Yeah, it's pretty close to the shape we want. So that is going to have to stick out of this. We're basically trying to make this shape in there. So I'm just going to use this as a guide. Then we're going to go to the lathe and carve it out. Okay, so this is going to be our bottom die. So we'll have the pin sticking out here. The top die will look like this. And have a hole in it. So this is our bottom die. It'll allow us to make this puff and the countersink. And our top die will push that in there. It'll probably actually be more like this. But this is a bit of trial and error. Like I'm gonna make the shapes and then I might have to modify them a little bit because I'm just doing this freehand. So we'll, uh, we'll just kind of figure it all out on the lathe. Okay, so I just made myself a, just a junky little template here. You would think that this needs to be more precise than it really does because um, the important parts are just the taper of that. You wanna make sure that it's got room for the screw. The actual metal doesn't need to touch this profile. It just needs to be touched on that edge to, to bring it over. These are my templates. Basically what it's gonna be with a pin in the center and we'll give it a shot. So let's go to the lathe. We'll give this a try, trial and error. So let's try it. We've got some cold rolled three quarter inch round bar. So I've got a two inch piece for the bottom and a four inch piece for the top, four inch just so that you can hold it and smack it with a hammer, a little two inch one. I like that it's only three quarters of an inch wide because if I'm doing a flange on a bead roll door panel or some kind of you know interior piece, bomber seats, whatever, I usually use a three quarter inch flange. So I don't want to go much bigger than that. You can obviously do whatever size you want and you can do it for all kinds of different size screws. This is just the one I commonly use on a lot of stuff. And it is the one that I used on the top panel of the console that everybody's been asking about. So I get my safety glasses so I don't go to the hospital today. First thing I'm going to do is drill my holes, the center holes. This little bit is uh, basically just a really strong center so that you can, you can center your drill hole. This is our 3 16 drill bit. So I don't want to go too far in. I'm just only going to go enough to get a, a nice pin in there. All 
All right. So that is that. Now I just need to grab a bit that's gonna make our shape. So it looks like this cutter that I've got here is probably gonna do a pretty good job of getting that shape in there. Eh. Might have better luck with this one actually. It's a little bit sharper and I should be able to make my curve in there. So all you machinists out there, I know this is not how you were taught in school to machine things by just eyeballing with paper templates, but that's how I do it. Okay, let's have a look at what we got so far. So it's looking pretty close as to what, uh, what we needed to do. Now the inside area here is mostly just a void. We don't want to transfer this onto our metal. The only thing that we really want pressing against the metal is this area and this tapered area. This tapered area is our screw and Basically this edge is the outside of the dimple. The dimple doesn't need to touch in here to get shape because we don't, we just don't want that. We're, we're going to want the outside of the sheet metal to be untouched in that area, just so that it still looks like untouched sheet metal. So it just needs to touch that edge and this taper. So I, I think I'm going to try and get that taper just a little bit sharper and maybe dig this out a little bit more. And I think it should be good. There is our bottom side. It's got the taper in it. It's got the kind of the pinching lip on the outside. I think it's gonna be okay for us. Let's make the other side and we'll have to just give it a try. See if it worked out. Just a little dabble, do ya? Okay, so now this one, this is our male die. It's going to poke these two little points in into there, it's gonna force the sheet metal around our taper and into a little bit of a bubble around there. So it's just meant to push inside the void. I will use this as a reference again for making that poke. I'm gonna try and be smart here for a second, which doesn't happen a lot. I just realized that I have a countersink. 
use it all the time. Why wouldn't I use it now? This countersink is cut at the taper at which tapered screws are. So I'm gonna use it for the center. I definitely didn't do that last time. I don't think this bit, the reason why I, you know, I made this realization is that this bit doesn't have enough clearance to get in there to make that cut. I don't even know why I was trying because I have a countersink. This is Rapid Tap. I use it for drilling holes. It uh, smells wonderful. If you've ever used it, you know why I say that because it actually does. Just gonna get our nice taper in there. See what she looks like. Now we want this taper to be a little bit oversized because the thickness of the material is gonna have to be within there as well. I'm just gonna check it with that screw if I could ever find where I put it. <laughs> People are gonna be yelling in the comments, you put it down here, we saw you. Okay, well that's, that's pretty much flush. So I'm gonna go a little further for the thickness of the material. Just gonna countersink it a little bit more. That'll be plenty, maybe even a little too much, but. Now I'm just gonna make the edge a little bit deeper. Okay, I think we're just about ready to give this thing a shot and see if we need to make any final adjustments. Pop this out of here. We're gonna drill a hole and give her a try. Okay, so you can see there's a little bit of play in there. That's what you wanna see. This is the female, the male. That's what it's gonna do. That's the tool right there. That's all there is to it. So I'm gonna cut this little pin off we're gonna stick that inside there. That's gonna live in there. That's gonna be our alignment pin. I'm just gonna cut it off a little bit here. Okay, just threw a little bit of a taper on there. I'll probably either throw a set screw in or just put some green Loctite to just leave that in there and, uh, and lock it in place. But that is that. Make sure that there's enough drill hole in here to get all the way down, which there is. That's good. So that aligns our two pieces. Now, what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna bead roll on the aluminum. You're gonna see it kind of go dunk, dunk, dunk because we're putting those stresses into it. Let's go to the bead roller real quick. Can we touch the metal? One, two. Okay, see that? It's gonna be sweet. I mean, this this happens on panels and I, I just don't want you to think that, uh, that this is the worst thing in the world because it isn't. If you were to, you know, drill a bunch of holes and just screw this onto your door panel, it wouldn't do that anymore because it's being held in place. But if you were to do a bunch of interior stuff and uh, you would see like a little bit of a wave if you could see these edges. So I like to try and avoid this kind of stuff if you can. And this is a tool that helps you avoid it dual purposely because it also looks awesome for screws, right? So let's drill a couple holes here. Dual purposely is not a word. I'm just gonna show you this little guy. It's a deburring tool. This is just a different tip for a deburring tool. Normally there's just like a little hook on here and you can deburr edges. This I use all the time, especially during this kind of thing. There's a lot of people that sell them. KBC tools, if you're local, they have this kind of stuff, KMS tools. I'm sure that most places have deburring tools, but there are certain kits that are not just to deburr edges. You can deburr holes. 
which is what this is. So stuff like this, where it's gonna cut your fingers. You can just run it around a couple times and she's beautiful. First try, I haven't welded this on here yet. I wonder if I should, hold on, let me do a quick weld. Okay, I'm just gonna tack it for now, just in case we have to modify it at all. So with our pin in there, and our piece of sheet metal down on that, this piece on, and use a hammer, a couple smacks. Let's just peel the edge, see what we did here. We made our little dimple. It looks pretty good. It's a little bit on the sharp side. I might tune down this sharpness a little bit. I'm gonna grab a screw first to check it. Actually, that's pretty nice. I think that works pretty good. It's not the same exact shape as the last one I made. I feel like the last one I made was a bit fatter. But uh, I do like that. It looks good. It is a little bit sharp though. It almost looks like it's stretched a little bit too much. I'm worried that that's even actually maybe a little crack there. Let me try and soften it up a little bit. Okay, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna break these tacks. I'm gonna make our outside a little bit bigger so that there's more area for the metal to take that stretch. I might just make it a little bit shallower. See what's happened here is, I think this is just a bit too sharp. I'm gonna compare it to my, uh, my truck here. This one, I think, is just a little bit sharper than this one. So I'm gonna make this one a little bit wider, I think. It'd be a little better. Okay, back to the lathe for just a quick touch up. Okay, so all I did was just make the, uh, the outside diameter of our bubble a little bit bigger, just so that it allows a little bit more material into the bubble so that it doesn't stretch a whole ton in a small area, creating that crack. So let's try it again. Okay, let's give this another shot. See how we did. Yeah, that's already looking better, I can tell. Nice and round. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I think that I could have hit it a little bit harder to finish that, you know? Yeah, if this was a little bit wider, it would be able to clamp that edge flat again. I wonder if that might be a, a good idea for a future one. But we're just gonna do them all now and you'll see that it's gonna take that pop out of the panel. I guess it doesn't matter which side has the alignment, alignment pin in it.
<laughs> Look how greasy my hands are. <laughs> so greasy. All right, so it worked out awesome. Uh, I'm stoked on the new tool. It works great. I definitely want to uh, glue that piece in, use some red Loctite or uh, green Loctite, the permanent stuff. But it did exactly what we wanted it to. We got, you know, that shape pressed in. We made these nice bubbles for our screws here. And not only is it a great dimple die tool, but like I said, it looks awesome on door panels or interior panels in general when you're using decorative sheet metal like this. You remember the pop that was in there? That pop is gone. And the reason being, I'm just gonna say it again so that it sinks in, is that when we step this edge, you're popping it up and you're essentially raising the center, right? You're kind of forcing the material in a way where it doesn't naturally wanna go. You're almost like stretching this spot or trying to stretch this spot in the center while the other outside is still its full size. Well, what this has done is this collects a little bit of metal and essentially puts little shrinks into it and will allow this outer metal to shrink a little bit to the same size that the inside is trying to be. So it takes that stress out of it. The pop is gone. Like it wants to stay flat. It's not going dunk, dunk, dunk. So if you're gonna make bead roll door panels and you're fighting with a little bit of stretch and you have to mount them anyway, why not make a little tool that allows you to dimple the holes, making them look cool and shrink the outside frame so that it takes the warp out of it. It's just something that, uh, that I've learned over the years and that I found out about my truck when I made those door panels. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I know a bunch of you guys have been asking because of the console video and, uh, and any other time that you've seen these little dimples in there. And the reason I haven't shown it to you is because I gave that tool away to my buddy Preston, Lakeview Fab in uh, Salmon Arm. That's who has the old tool. It looks exactly like this. It's just made out of rustier metal, that's all. So uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching Make It Custom. Don't forget to like, click subscribe, hit notifications. Check out our website, japanscustoms.com. It's in the description below. And everybody have a great day. I look forward to bringing you two videos a week for the rest of the year.